السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ الحمد للہ الحمد للہ نحمد و نستعین و نستغفر و نؤمن به و نتوکل و علیہ و نعوذ باللہ من شرور انفسنا و من سیئات اعمالنا من یادہ اللہ فلا مضل له و من یدلله فلا هادی لا ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا وحبيبنا ومولانا محمدا عبده ورسوله إن الله وملائكته يسلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم صلى الله على سيدنا ومولانا محمد وعلى اله واصحابه وسلم استغفر الله ان الله غفور رحيم استغفر الله ان الله غفور رحيم بلغ العلا بكماله كشف الدجا بجماله حسنت جميع خصاله سلوا عليه واله لا اله الا الله لا اله إلا الله لا إله إلا الله محمد رسول الله respected brothers and sisters and respected viewers let's say alhamdulillah it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has given us the tawfiq to, to join with this live program and as you know We'll talk today about Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam. This is a very important topic and we'll just to remind you and refresh your knowledge will very, you know, shortly we'll go over with important aspect of the stories of Ibrahim that was mentioned alayhi salatu wa salam mentioned in the Holy Quran and some analysis. As we mentioned the legacy of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam. As you know, Hajrat Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he was born in Iraq, in the city, as you know, in Babylon, very famous city of that time. So, Hajrat Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he started preaching dawah to the people, including his father at a very early age, when, when he was like a teenage. Imagine, a young boy, and he started making dawah. To, you know, first he was giving dawah to his own father. He's telling to his father, my father, follow me. I will guide you to the straight path, to the right path, because I have knowledge and you don't have that. Subhanallah. So what is important for us that dawa is to be given to the family members. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned very clearly, Qū anfusakum wahlikum nara. You save yourself from the hellfire and your family members, close relatives, children, wife. So, but we are not doing it today. We are busy with other things. We are paying attention whether our family members, they are doing the world it matters, going to college, or bringing the paycheck, but we are not helping them how to save from the hellfire. 
Who anfusakum wahlikum nara? Save yourself from the hellfire and your close relatives. Subhanallah. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, his father, you know, who, uh, whose name is mentioned in the Quran as Azar. His name is Azar, and he used to make the idols and is to sell them. That was his main source of income. By selling the idols, he is to make money, and this is his livelihood. So, Sayyidina Ibrahim, alayhi wa salatu as a teenage, at his teen, teen age, he was telling his father, why you are worshipping the idols? They cannot help you. They cannot do anything for you. And they can even talk. And you are the one making these idols with your own hand. And now, and then you are worshipping them. You know, where is the logic? But father became angry. And at one time, he threatened his own son that he will stone him to death. Imagine the relation between the son and the father because of this dawah. Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he was giving dawah to the all other people around. And everybody in that society, everywhere they are engaged in shirk. They are all engaged in shirk. They are doing idol, they are idol worshippers. And he is explaining to them, you know, why you are doing this? These idols, they cannot talk. They cannot take care of themselves. How they can get anything for you? How you will be benefited from them? What, what was their answer? Their answer was, you know, our forefathers. They used to do, do it, and that's why we are doing it. But they don't have any real answer to his question. That why you are doing it? Why you are doing shirk? And these idols, they cannot talk. They cannot help you. They cannot even feed themselves. One day, one day, you know, everybody from that community, they used to go for festival. Likewise, in our society, we have, you know, picnics and other uh, festivals. So everybody attends those festivals. Everybody is going. So somebody came, they asked and invited him, Ibrahim, let's go. Let's go to the festival. But what was his answer? He said, I am sick, Anni Sati. He meant that I am sick of what you are doing. He was not really physically ill, but they thought, okay, he's sick, okay, leave him alone and let's go. So everybody went for a festival. Ibrahim, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he entered into their temple where all these idols are there. And he was talking to them and he started destroying one after another. One after another, he destroyed all the idols. And at the end, he hung the axe at the neck of the big idol. Imagine how brave he was. So when those people came back and they saw all their idols, their God, were destroyed. They became very mad. And they tried to find out who did it. Somebody told, maybe a boy named Ibrahim did it. So bring him. So they asked him, you did it? What was his answer? He was very intelligent, young boy. He told them, Ask your, you know, God, this big idol, ask him. Let him, let's see how he answer. Definitely, the idol cannot talk. They are very angry and they decided to punish him. Qalu harriku, burn him. That was the decision, burn him. So they get all these words from different places, fuel and it was like few 
months they built that fire that fire even you know the birds that were flying high they could be burnt because of that the flame of the fire was so and they threw him into that fire ibrahim alayhi was salatu salam he was not afraid of this he was not afraid of his own life why because he has connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he believe in oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and all he is doing he is doing the right thing he is ready to give his life for tawhid for allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for his iman so even the angel gabriel showed up and offered help he said no i don't want any help from anybody else and he made a dua hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil fa ni'mal maula wa ni'man nasir beautiful dua and he's telling hasbunallah wa ni'mal wakil fa ni'mal maula wa ni'man nasir allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the best who can solve your problem and he has full tawakkul to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he is the one who can solve your problem nicely nobody else so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point he said he gave order to the fire directly qulna ya nar kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim subhanallah allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving order to fire because it's all the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fire wind everything you know they are the creation of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so they will listen to the creator so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave order to the fire that the fire should be cool and be comfortable for ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wassalam ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wassalam he was so comfortable in that fire in that fire he mentioned that never ever in his life he was so comfortable as he was in the fire subhanallah imagine how allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made this fire comfortable air condition for ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wassalam why because of his iman because of his tawakkul because of his you know deep connection with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and people watched thousands of people around they saw with their own eyes but imagine when he came out came out from this fire intact you know victorious only one person accepted his deen and who is that that was his nephew hadrat lut alayhi wa salatu wa salam he was also a young boy he accepted the deen of ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam because he saw he witnessed that truth but nobody else amana lahu lut only one lut who accepted his deen brothers sisters you see definitely somebody is atheist who does not believe in allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he can ask you question how how come fire fire will not burn him anything you you know drop in fire it just burn but brother sister this is called iman fire will follow the command of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he will not follow you he will not follow others but the fire you know got direct order from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala qulna ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala ibrahim so the king of the country his name is namrud allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him so much power and he was so you know tyrant he claimed himself the god so he asked bring this boy to me he wanted to talk with him he wanted to see who is that boy so ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam went in front of namrud the king and 
there was a debate between the king and Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam. Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, he was not afraid of, at all. You see? So this tyrant king, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, he's telling to our prophet that, do you know that king who got the, you know, the power from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and now he's debating with Ibrahim about the existence of the Lord. So who is your Lord? Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam answered, he said, Lord, my Lord is the one who gives life and he takes away. He takes away. So what happened? This king, this Namrud, he asked his people, go and bring two persons from the jail, from the prison. And he brought and said, one, you are free. And the other one, just kill him, you know, assassinated. So he showed that, look at this. I'm the one, I can give life. And this example, and the other one, you know, he's dead. Na'udhu billah. So, Hajrat Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he was so smart. He said, you know, it's not worth to talk with him on this point again. Let's go to the next point. Next point. What was his next point? He said, my Lord, my Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brings the sun from the east. If you can, can you bring it from the west? Can you bring it from the west? فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفُرُ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ He was defeated. He didn't have any answer to that question. Can he bring the sun from the west? No. He said he couldn't say anything. That's why Allah said, فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفُرُ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ those who are zalim, oppressor, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like them, doesn't help them. So Namrud is one of the zalim. فَبُهِتَ الَّذِي كَفَرُ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِ الْقَوْمَ الظَّالِمِينَ And we have to remember, we should not be the oppressor. We should not. You know, based on your ability, you may have somebody working under you. Don't oppress him. Because... Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not like the oppressors. And when the person who is oppressed, majloom, if he makes dua against you, you will be in trouble. You will be in trouble. So that we need to pay attention all the time. It's not just the king and queen and prime minister. It's even under you, if you have people who are working under you or under your care, don't be oppressor. Hajrat Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, at that point, he decided with Lut alayhi wa salatu wa salam to leave that place. He was leaving because it's very hard to stay there. Everybody against him. Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he went to another place called Harrar and where he was giving dawah. People at that place, they used to worship the planets, sun, moon. So he was with them, and when they saw the moon, oh, this is our God. And when the moon, you know, in the night is over, the sun starts, they said, no, it's not the moon. The sun is our God. Then the sun also, you know, this night starts, the planets, the other stars started, they are God. So Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa explained to them that, that cannot be your God, because God has to be in a constant, not just they will be absent for night and present for the day. It's not the characteristic of the God. So Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, whole life, he was debating. He was debating. He was running around. He was not sitting in one place, all for the sake of the religion, for Tawheed. He is the only one the symbol of Tawheed. Inni wajjahatu wajhiya lillazi fatara samawati wal arda hanifan wa ma ana min al-mushrikeen. This is every day in our salat. We recite it. This is from Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam. He showed his, 
in our firm belief in the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he never committed shirk. He never worshipped any idols. Subhanallah. So the, among the legacy of Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, number one, Tawheed, oneness. He was very strong. Stood against everybody, including his father, including the king of the country. Only for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because he believed in oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah is our sustainer, He is our protector, He is our creator. So all we need to worship Him, but we should not worship any idols or anything else. Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, he didn't have any children. Rabbi habli min as at old age, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala granted his dua and he got two sons and he was very happy. Alhamdulillahillazi wahabali wa ala al kibari ismaila wa ishaq in rabbi la samir dua in rabbi la samir dua. Brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will respond to our dua. So you see, he married early age, and at old age, Allah granted him two sons. So he said, he was so happy. Alhamdulillah, illazi wahabali wa ala al kibari ismaila wa ishaq inna rabbi la sameeh dua. So brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to make dua. Whatever problem we have, you have, you know, only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can solve it and make dua and you will get this reply because in the, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala always responds to our dua. So he got a son, one is Ismail, another one is Haq. So the lineage of Ishaq, it goes to the children of Israel. And Ishaq has a son, his name is Jacob. Yaqub alayhi wa salatu wa salam, and he got 12 sons. Out of 12, one is Hadrat Yusuf alayhi wa salatu wa salam. So that lineage goes to the children of Israel. And with the Muslim, our lineage from Sayyidina Ismail alayhi wa salatu wa salam. When Ismail alayhi wa salatu wa salam, around one or two years, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he was testing him again. You see, his life is full of tests. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is testing him, told him, take your wife and your, you know, two years old son to a place, lonely place. It was close next to Masjid al-Haram. At that time, it was, it's just desert, lonely, Nobody's there. Nobody was living there. And he brought them from far away and left them behind. And he was living, going away. His wife asked question, Hajar, that why you are leaving us behind? Why you are leaving us behind? And the third time she said, is it by the will of, by the order of, by the command of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And he said, yes. She said, yes. Subhanallah. He said, if it is the order of Allah, then you can go. Allah will take care of us. He will not neglect us. Subhanallah. Look at the iman of this woman. You know, in a desert, lonely place, no food, nobody. And how she will survive. But she has tawakkal. And she had iman that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not neglect us. Subhanallah. Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he went to little far and made dua. Rabbana inni askantu min zurriyatin ghayri biwadin zi zar'in inda baytika al-muharram. Rabbana liyuqim as-salata faj'al afidatan min al-nasi tahu ilayhim wa tarzukuhum min al-samarati la'allahum yashkurun. Subhanallah. Beautiful dua. You see, look at this. Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he left his son and his wife and he's telling, my Lord, the reason I'm living behind so that they can establish Salat. In this desert, lonely place, the number one reason, so that they can establish Salat. Brothers, sisters, you know, for us, food, drink, shelter, education, 
All these basic needs are more important. But for the righteous people, for the prophets, their first priority is worship, is salat. He said, I am leaving them behind so that they can establish salat, subhanallah. First priority is worship, is ibadah, zikr of Allah. This is the first priority. Definitely he added later on about food and drink. And when you get food and drink, you should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Subhanallah. See, everything he's connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. رَبَّنَا إِنِّي أَسْكَنْتُ مِنْ ذُرِّيَّةٍ غَيْرِ بِوَادٍ ذِي زَرْعٍ عِنْدَ بَيْتِكَ الْمُحَرَّمِ رَبَّنَا لِيُقِيمُ الصَّلَاةَ فَجَعَلْ أَفِدَةً مِنَ النَّاسِ تَهْوِلِهِمْ وَتَرْدُقُهُ مِنَ الثَّمَرَاتِ الْعَلَّهُمْ يَشْكُرُونَ سبحان الله that dua of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam that lonely city that you know desert city you know they never had short of food as you know you know Hajrat Hajar she was running around because all food, some dates and water all ran away and now the little boy, she, he's crying. Ismail, alayhi wa salatu wa salam, is a little boy. He needs food and drink. He's crying. And where she can get the food? So she was, but imagine, she's not sitting around. She's not taking the sun and saying, Allah, give food, give drink. No, she was searching whether she can find some source, you know, of food and drink. And as you know, seven times she was marching Safa wal Marwa. Inna Safa wal Marwa min sha'irillah. At this, after seven times, you know, she heard a voice and she returned and saw at a close to the sun, where his son was, you know, the divine water started gushing out. And she made a border. And that water is Zamzam. And you know, the, this is the story of Zamzam. Subhanallah. That divine water is flowing until now. And when you go to Hajj, you bring that water for healing for all other purposes. Subhanallah. Look at this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala rewarded that Hajar for her Iman. For her Iman. And tawakkal to Allah. And made her so famous. Where can, your hajj will not be completed if you don't do sai around that safa and marwa. Subhanallah. Inna safa wal marwa min sha'airillah. Safa and marwa today is quite different from those days. And as a woman, she was running in the hills seven times, searching for food and drink. So, brothers, sisters, what do we learn from here? We cannot be sitting, you know, and Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, provide us with sustenance. No, we need to search for food. We need to do our part. We need to work hard. We should not depend on social security or, you know, definitely somebody is disabled, that's one thing, but when you have the ability to work, you know, Nabi Karim sallallahu alayhi wa salatu wa mentioned, Al-Kasibu Habibullah, those who earn through hard work, their earnings, they are the friend of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Today, Muslim Ummah, we are not hard working. We see Japan, you know, they're working hard. Western country, they're so developed. But why our situation is like that? Because we are lazy, we don't want, want to work. But we are trying to find some easy way. But there is no easy way. لَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ فِي كَبَقْ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created us. We need to have some activities, work exercise to maintain even our physical body. So it's very important that we should, we should not just sit around, but look at this woman, Hajar. She was running around seven times in that, you know, these mountains, they are very high at, you know, at that situation, hard. And, you know, if I or somebody, you know, I mean, if your heart condition is not good, you cannot run seven times. But she did it seven times, you know, for searching food for her son, subhanAllah. So brothers, sisters, when Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he was making, you know, visits time to time. And he, one time he showed up and Ismail alayhi wa salatu wa salam, he grew up and the people had, in that area, 
the Daruham, they called the some tribe. They, they initially they came to Hajar and asked, can we, can we, you know, can I stay with you? Because, you know, I mean, they found there is water here and in desert, how important is water? But this wise woman, she said, yes, you can stay with us, but the water belongs to me. And, you know, I have to control the water, subhanAllah. They agreed. And that Darhum people, they like Ismail alayhi wa salatu salam, he got him married. And one time, Hajrat Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam, he came, he visited, and he knocked on the door, and he, some woman showed up, and he asked, where is your husband? She said, he's, you know, he's not home. So tell him, you know, he asked some question to her. How is your life here? She said, miserable. He asked, how is the water? Miserable. How is the food made? Miserable. So Hadrat Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam told her, when your husband comes, tell him that, you know, to change the doorstep. Subhanallah. Ismail alayhi wa salatu salam came back and he, you know, he asked anybody uh, any message, anything as, you know, as usual. So he, she said, old man came here and he told me, to change the doorstep, to tell, to tell you. Subhanallah, he realized right away, he told her, that's my husband, sorry, that's my father, and he wanted me to divorce you. And he did it. And then he married again, and Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam came back, and at that time he knocked on the door, the woman showed up, he asked, how is your food? Alhamdulillah. How is your water? Alhamdulillah. How is your life? Alhamdulillah. And Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu salam told her, when your husband comes, tell him that to keep the doorstep. Subhanallah. We'll uh, stop here, but here the thing is very important. You know, from the righteous family, and you know, as a Muslim, as a believer, a mu'min, we should be happy and content with whatever we have. Subhanallah. Look at this, the, the difference between the two women. There is, you know, the same food, but one is happy with whatever she had. She's content because it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whatever condition you are, we are. We should be very happy. We should be thankful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to change that situation, make it better. Allah will make it. But maybe you are going through, we are going through the, you know, testing period. So yeah, that's why you need to have patience and be grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Inshallah, we'll continue, uh, you know, next time because it's a long uh, story and so many things to learn from him and we'll make uh, dua and uh, we'll continue other day, the rest part of the story of Sayyidina Ibrahim alayhi wa salatu wa salam. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam sallallahu ala Sayyidina Mawlana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa ashabihi wa sallam أستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم اللهم أمين ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقينا عذاب النار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين ربنا لا تزق قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك الرحمة إنك أنت الوهاب أي الله أي بروديك العالم أي فبيتر رمضان ما شر مد أي الله تمر بندرا أي الله جرا أي برنامج جان كرسين الله أمين اللهك أي الله تمر خليل الله خليل الله جبون تكي شمين الله شنا كرشي ما أبو بولتو تجي ما أف كريدا أي الله صاحب تجو تازدار مدينة شنار مدينة حديث محمد الرسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تو سلام الدربار يحوشيد آي الله فبيت رمضان ما شر خطير ما درك ما أفكر دوما أقول آي الله مرا وإننا يكرد شيء مرا نافر ما نيكرد شيء كيار بلتسي أستغفر الله إن الله غفور رحيم آي الله شاعت دين مرا رضاري كسي ما أقول أكمت تمي مولار شنتشت دين تمار حكم بلان قرتسي ما أقول آیا الله ما در سیام شادنا که تو میکوبل کرو؟ آیا الله ما در جیبان ربیگو تو گناه؟ آیا الله شب نفرمانی و اینا؟ آبیشار که تو میکوما کرده دامن بود؟ 
আয়াল্লাহ আমাদেরকে তোমার মকুল বন্ধুদের মধ্যে পরিগণিত করো মাহবুদ আয়াল্লাহ যেভাবে উপাসনা করলে আয়াল্লাহ যে ফজাফন করলে তুমি মলা রাজি আর খুশি হো সেইভাবে আমাদেরকে পরিচালনা করো মাহবুদ আলহামদুলিল্লাহ রব্বিল আলমিন আর রহমান মালিক উমিদ্দিন ইয়া কেন আবুদ ইয়া কেন স্তাইন আয়াল্লাহ আমরা একমাত্র তোমারই উপাসনা করি আর তোমার দরবারের সাহায্য চাচ্ছি মাহবুদ আয়াল্লাহ আমাদেরকে এই মহামারী এই করোনা ভাইরাসের আয়াল্লাহ কবল থেকে আমাদেরকে তুমি হেফাজত করো আমাদের বিশ্বাস একমাত্র তুমি আমাদেরকে হেফাজত তোমার আমাদেরকে সেভ করতে পারো আয়াল্লাহ আমরা তোমার উপরে তাওয়াক্কল যেভাবে হজরত ইব্রাহিম আলাইসালাম তোমার উপরে তাওয়াক্কল করেছিলেন আমরা বলতেছি হাসবুনাল সৈত্য সঠিক পথে পরিচালিত করো রব্বি জালনি মুকিম সালাতি ওমিন জরুরিয়তি রব্বানা তকাবল দোয়া আয়াল্লাহ আয়াল্লাহ সব নিয়ামতের জন্য তোমার দরবারে বলতেছি আলহামদুলিল্লাহ রব্বিল আলমিন আয়াল্লাহ তুমি আমাদের সহায় রব্বি নীলিমা জলত ইলাইমিন খাইরিন ফকির আটকা পড়ে গেছি আয়াল্লাহ অভাব অনাটন তুমি দূর করে দাও আয়াল্লাহ আয় রব্বুল আলমিন উম্মতে মোহাম্মদিকে তুমি সাহায্য করো আল্লাহ মনসুর মন্নাসরদিন মোহাম্মদিন সাল্লাহাম আয়াল্লাহ আমাদের পক্ষ থেকে কোটি কোটি সালাত আর সালাম সোনার মদিনায় পৌঁছিল আয়াল্লাহ আয়াল্লাহ তুমি ছাড়া আমাদের কেহ সাহায্য করে কেহ নাই ওয়াসাল্লাহ